are the perks of membership? Just being a beezer is good enough, isn't it? <laughs> Hi, Pink Stars! Sometimes I do, I'll do, uh, members-only streams and stuff. Oh, what do you do? What do you do? -y? Hi, everybody. Happy Monday night. Thank you all for joining us. Hey, Miss Cheekbones, how are you? I, I, I'm already on. I don't know if I, I caught you out there or not. No, I am present and ready for duty. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Uh, just Cheekbones, remind everybody a little bit about uh, your background. You don't have to give a lot of information, but I've had some new subscribers to the channel recently. Um, I'll just let everyone know who I am, and I'm going to give you a chance to introduce yourself. How's that sound? Good deal. So my name's Ray, otherwise known as Life and Vibe. I'm a registered nurse here in the United States. I am licensed here. I've been practicing probably close to 15 years now, and I uh, specialize in cardiac, uh, or heart, cancer, long-term care, uh, end-of-life care, all the good, um, obviously patients with diabetes, booty booty herself. And uh, specifically around this time, Ramadan has started today. She is talking about fasting. So we've got some, um, I, I'm very curious to hear about Cheekbone's thought on that tonight. And so I'm going to pass it over to you, um, Cheekbone, so you can introduce yourself to the audience. Uh my name is Sonia. I'm a registered dietitian. Uh, have been for going on 17 years. Uh, went back to school as an older student, and because uh, it was something I always wanted to do, I was love nutrition. Um, I have worked in all fields, like Miss Ray. I've done oncology, cardiac, um, dialysis, uh, dietitian, acute care, long term care, uh, skilled, you name it, clinical. Yes. And I've also done some, I guess, really the last few years have been more weight loss than anything, but and diabetes education. Excellent. Well, I think that's going to be so beneficial for our uh, audience this evening. And if you do like this type of content, don't forget to hit the likes. Subscribe if you haven't had a chance yet. That will give you a chance, I think, to enter into the chat. And obviously, we're here to discuss things uh, regarding, uh, you know, good medical care since we all know it's often very difficult to access a lot of info. Well, there's so much information out there, but I think it's hard sometimes for people to discern what is good legitimate information and what is just other types of information. And I think I've started to notice, and I don't know if you've noticed watching other content in the community, there's been a better understanding of Chantel's unmanaged type 2 diabetes and some of the illnesses that she's potentially starting to um, potentially have risks for as she goes ahead. What are, what are your thoughts and feelings about her and how she's currently looking before we get into, just take a peek, see at this grocery haul real quick. And then we're going to get into the questions we had from the audience, uh, from that uh, community tab. You know, she's, she's not been looking well uh, the last several times that I've seen her lives or recorded content um, and, you know, the, the thing about Chantal is that it's not just her diabetes because we know she has high blood pressure. We know she has liver disease. She has some form of kidney disease. So, you know, she is just a, a hodgy podgy of comorbidities. Uh, so it's terrifying to me. And, and I feel like she kind of just slights her diabetes and it, I think it sends a bad signal to people out there um you know oh I can eat like this and have a blood sugar of 13. Right and what do you think about you know talking about that before we sort of head into it there's been some discussion in the community as to whether or not she's showing the numbers legitimately on the screen whether she's kind of partially hiding them <laughs> I was kind of surprised because, and, and what are your thoughts about this? Because I know you have worked with uh, diabetic patients, how she did a very performative, I felt, blood sugar, very close after she just ate her pizza. So that, to me, would not be a very good time to take a blood sugar. When would be uh, the time with somebody to take their blood sugar because there's a lot of people don't take it properly if they are being told to take it maybe 
at meals? Yeah, it's two hours after she eats would be when she would have needed to take her blood sugar. Um, her glucometer is broke. Now, I don't, I think that one reading she took, I, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I think it said, was it 13.3? And some people thought it was reading 19.3. Uh, regardless. 20. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's so high and, the, you know, she just was like not concerned at all. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think she's doing it on a regular basis. I don't feel like she's taking her medication on a regular basis because we all any of us that have been here for a big hot minute. No, she never does what she's supposed to when it comes to medications. Um so, uh, yeah, two hours after she ate, not right after she right, ate. Like, right. I think I said something about that after uh, she ate, too. I did say, too, in order to see any type of insulin resistance, which is where she's probably sitting at, she would have needed to have waited two hours after that pizza. So, and right. it was still extremely high. So, yeah. I mean, it didn't really show anything to anybody. And I think that's what we need to clarify because I don't think people really understand that that doesn't say anything about her blood sugar. I mean, it, it's uh, it's astronomical in her, you know, oh, uh, it was eight one time. I'm like, it, but that, that's still not good. Right, you know, right. Yeah. And people, right. I think that's what people, so what do you think her blood sugar would have been two hours after that pizza? Because I think I want to say she had ate those two subs that she said half, one half was for Salau. And the other was supposed to be for her. And then she proceeded to eat both halves of, or both subs. <laughs> Correct. And then and, and, you know, it, it's up. hard to gauge with her because her hours, you know, she sleeps all day and then is up at night. And there was some speculation that she had ordered all of it at once. Was it at one hour apart? I, I mean, I really, you know, I you just get dazed and confused when it comes to her. Um, but there's no telling. I mean, her, I, I would suspect there were in the upper 200 blood sugar levels. No. Oh, I, right. And I think she was sitting around that right after she ate the pizza when she took those first ones. So I'm like thinking, God, what is she going to be two hours after this? And, and I don't, if she is taking her medication, when is she taking it? You know, I, that I don't know either. She may take it on occasion to lower the sugars if she's going to take a reading. Could be. Right. And I, I there's a lot of discussion around her taking, obviously, and I think we spoke about this last time, her taking the medications um, incorrectly, maybe higher doses, and thinking that is controlling and managing her blood sugars. When in reality, is uh, that's not the case. That's not helping her anywhere with her blood no. sugars at this time. No, she's not managing her blood sugars. <laughs> she a is not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, thinking about that, and before we go into this grocery haul, and Chantel is preparing for Ramadan. Now, obviously, we're not experts. Well, at least I'm not, and I don't know about yourself, Sonia, but I don't think, I don't know whether you're an expert on Ramadan, but you may be more understanding of fasting. And so I understand in that part of the globe, Chantal would be expected to fast for 14 hours. And diabetics are excluded from having to participate because it is understood that they are medically, you know, of all the, like, they have the elderly, they have, like, babies, like, chil you know, little children, you know, certain people with illness, and diabetics. So why is it so important? And is Chantel correct in thinking that this intermittent fasting is going to be the cure-all to all her health problems currently? <laughs> You know, I, my best advice to her is that I, I would not be doing uh, the fasting. But her a complication that she's going to have is when your blood sugars are at or over nine, you run the risk of dehydration because that excess glucose pulls fluid or your, your body, you know, it has, it's trying to flush the extra glucose out. So you can become dehydrated very quickly if your blood sugars are at that level. So if she's not, you know, dehydration to me would be a bigger risk for her um, than, 
you know, say hyperglycemia, you know, because her sugars are, you know, on up there. Right. And dehydration can be extremely dangerous. I don't think that people realize that dehydration can lead to irregular heart rhythms and lead to uh, tachycardias and lowering of blood pressures and a number of different uh, vasomotor changes in the body um, that can be actually quite dangerous to people. And I don't know, and, and like I said, I'm not an expert around Ramadan, and I don't remember, I don't know if they are allowed to have water throughout the day, and that is the one thing they are permitted to have. Yeah. You know, that, I'm, you know, I'm, I hate to say I'm not an expert on uh, the Ramadan, but Angel of Glass is correct that acute kidney failure. She's right. already got some form of kidney disease, and uh, that dehydration can God. push her on over, you know, into uh, the acute renal failure. Oh, God. And, of course, you know, of course, my cardiac background, I'm always going to start thinking, you know, how does it affect the heart, you know? Because <laughs> And I, so, you know, and, of course, of course, those kidneys. I don't think her kidneys can, t I mean, she, I have noticed recently, and I think, I just want to do like a ring watch, as I call it. And I don't know if the ring came off initially because she argued with Salau, and that's irregardless. But I just don't know. She's so swollen now that that ring has started to really cut into her finger. because She looks so swollen. And her skin has started to get an orange peel consistency to it. Mm -hmm. it does. She does not look good. Do you know any reason why she may be kind of starting just to look so flushed i mean i know we've talked about the rosacea i've talked about lupus potentially i mean we just <laughs> we saw well, you know that it's just uh well you know the the skin health with diabetes there's several you know things that uh that diabetes will show up on the skin and uh diabetic dermopathy you know red uh, brownie patches on the skin you know that may be you know what is showing on her face um it could be a bacterial infection you have a run a high risk of dry and itchy skin with diabetes oh, so God. and, and we talked yesterday not to interrupt you sorry about that cpap potentially not being properly cleaned by chantelle uh, today to a point where i was so grossed out <laughs> I, my my husband wears one. God bless okay. his soul. And and I can tell you, I mean, I know how he cleans that thing. Um, soaks it in the vinegar water, runs the ozone thing on it. I don't have never heard her talk about cleaning that CPAP. If she Neither. has, it's I've not I've not heard her say it. I don't think I have either. <laughs> so and I mean, that you, is concerning for respiratory infection <laughs> and all that shisha she's smoking. Gosh, that's, that's not that's not helping. It's not helping. <laughs> oh gosh. So, do you think in all reality, and then we'll look at this grocery haul uh, real fast, is uh, fasting a good plan for her at this time? Would that be advisable for Chantel at this moment? In time? Is that something that we could advise her to do if she were your patient? Well, you know, we're talking about Chantal here. Like I right. said, my concern on, on my, as a registered dietitian, would, my first concern would be the dehydration. Um, with the medication that she's on, there's really not a risk of, um, you know, say if she's fasting and taking her medication of becoming hypoglycemic, uh, like if she was on insulin. Uh, but no matter what she says, she's not going, her fasting is her sleeping. That's her night, night time. That's when she's fasting is when she's asleep. And I think she's kind of over the past few weeks have, has changed her schedule as we have seen that, you know, she sleeps all day and then is up and eats all night. So I think she's just modified her lifestyle to fit Ramadan fasting. Uh, not like people that work day jobs and they're, you know, uh, being, you know, uh, 
doing the doing the fasting because of the religious beliefs. She's just altering her lifestyle to do the fasting. I don't. It's hard to say if it would be. I, I don't think it would be that bad for her, but. But, you know, she's got so much going on, you know, it's hard, you know, with the kidneys and then the, you know, heart disease and high blood pressure and all of that. Um, but I don't think it would be as bad for her as to say somebody, a type one diabetic or somebody that was insulin dependent. Right. Right. And we don't even know if Chantel needs to be insulin dependent at this point because she's. Oh, I, I, I'll bet my last $5 on a grumbling stomach that woman needs to be on insulin. Right, I, I right. That, but she's not. So Right, right. She's currently not. but that, And that's another reason why it would potentially be not advisable because she's not really getting follow-up and care through a healthcare professional who's going to make sure that she's doing this safely and not doing anything that could potentially... And, and for me, it, it, I concern about her and the diabetes and becoming more of a night creature. I know that's going to happen probably for Ramadan, but just because I know that there are some studies that show the link between that and an increased risk in type 2 diabetes, kind of the night shift people, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then she has less time getting outside, which she doesn't do anyway, but she's no. not even getting enough vitamin D, I don't think. So that no. is just another issue for me. And it's just... I just don't think that she's really, she talks about it, but whether she, you know, she never, you never see the bottle of vitamin D in her hand, like, oh, I've got this brand and this is why I'm trying, you know, which yeah. always makes me then doubt, is she really taking any of this stuff? Because if you were, then why do we never see a medication bottle? It would yeah. be so easy to show. You don't even have to show your label. You can show the back of it, you know? Yeah. But we never see them. Correct. I mean, that's somebody I saw, I, can't, I don't know if it was at Yaba or somebody mentioned, uh, you know, her blood, is she on the blood thinners for right. her pulmonary embolisms? I, I don't know. Is she still taking your antidepressants? I, I don't know. And if she is, I'm not sure what well, she's taking. Well, who would be prescribing and following her? I mean, that's what I think people don't understand. You just don't get meds like that. You know, <laughs> it's not like one time you went and you got prescribed and you've got a lifelong prescription. Correct. You know, that's not – a lot of these drugs are obviously going to also potentially affect organs. And so you would be like, if she really is taking Diflocanac, then she needs to be getting liver panels because that mm -hmm. drug is metabolized through the liver and quite tough on it, from what I understand from reading more about the drug. I've only ever used it topically on my knee. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, well, I hope it's not the sodium version because you don't need extra salt. It, it, there's, uh, you know, and, you know, you need to know the medica her medications just, uh, you know, if there's, is there some conflict with them? You know, is if it's a uh, antihypertensive, is that going to work well with the type of diabetic medication she's I've on? I've never or, heard her mention one blood pressure medication ever. Uh, no, no, I you know I vaguely remember when she was having the migraines and she said you know was talking about oh my blood pressure's so high oh I can't eat salt and fried foods and that lasted all of five hot minutes. I cannot remember if she said they gave her any medication for her high blood pressure. Right, um, but that prescription would be long gone. Yeah, absolutely. Would be long gone by now. Yeah. I mean, they're not, like I said, I mean, not everything over the counter in Canada. I'm sure they still need to have, unless she filled up on prescriptions when she went back home. But it doesn't yeah. sound like it to me. It sounds like she had nothing and she was trying to get stuff through an emergency room. That's what it seems yeah. like to me. And she didn't even stay around for that because she wouldn't get what she wanted. So she yeah. bailed out on her test. But anyway, all right. All right. Let me see if I can bring up Chantel and still manage. I got a new – and thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm sorry if I'm not saying hi. I do see all of you in the chat, chatting away, and I'm looking through it. So thank you all for being here. If you haven't had a chance to like this content, then please do so. And this to remind everybody, this is just for educational and informational purposes only. Miss Tony and I are just having a nice conversation because we just want to make sure that there's been so many questions about her and fasting and so forth. 
And so we're just having a conversation specifically around this particular uh, content creator. This is not any medical advice for Chantel, and we are not part of her treatment team. Isn't that correct? Correct. <laughs> Correct. All right. Let me see um, if I can share screen. Because like I said, I got a new modem the other day. So I got all big. Ooh, I know. New modem. I did. It was a it was a oh, it was a great deal at Walmart. Here she is. So I skipped Salau singing and everything else because oh, I could you. not. I got for this um stock up haul. All right, so let's go. All right, so this is um round one of this haul. Um it's going to be a lot of stuff and I'm not looking forward to organizing it and putting it away but that's a big job I have to do before Ramadan so um so yes we have a couple cases of water here at the back those blue cases are water um here we have some long shelf life full fat milk really good for making um Arabic desserts like um mahalabiya which is like a milk pudding and rice pudding with some eggs. They had a huge sale on the vegetables. So I got a bunch of kilos of eggplant because I plan on making. I should have asked the question in the poll. I asked a question in the poll about if you haven't had an opportunity to check the poll out, there's a check, there's a poll about those uh, suspicious weed looking uh, pistachio nut nuggets that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, about Chantel, uh, whether or not that plate of nut nuggets is going to be uh, just a couple eaten by her, uh, and then she, you know, she's fully aware she's got diabetes type two, so she's not going to touch a nugget or a nougat or whatever. <laughs> that's, I think yeah. it's nougat. nougat. That's it. And then we have uh, the other answer is just a few, but she's going to share the rest with guests. <laughs> yeah. Wink, wink. Wink, wink, because we know she got guests. And then the last, pl the the answer was just no bloody, she's going to eat the entire bloody plate alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, I, she always likes to say she's got guests. So anyway, that's the poll if you want to participate. It's free to participate. Anyway, Rocky over here has a question, and then we'll have your first thoughts on that grocery haul. Good evening from Miami, ladies. From your perception, do you think Chantel fully understands the ramifications? Every time I laugh, I'm sorry. Because we know what the answer is. This is. Uh, the ramifications of what she's doing to herself. Or do you think she's just straight given up on life? Oh, Sonia, your thoughts. I think that some she has had to have some cold, uh, hard truths told to her by medical professionals about, you know, the ramifications of ignoring these serious health conditions. I don't know if she just thinks she's 10 foot tall and bulletproof or if, and she has said, I had rather be happy stuffing my face and die young than be miserable and eat healthy and live to an old age. Um, I think she knows, but I, you know, I think she uh, thinks that I've made it this far. I can keep it going. I, you know, she hasn't had anything really serious happen to her. And to a lot of people, that's uh, your wake up call. And that always surprises me, cheekbones, because I would think anybody who's been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes which le leads to organ failure, has had two pulmonary embolisms, uh, a hysterectomy. Gallbladder <laughs> <laughs> um, removal. Gallbladder removal, diagnosis of the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, and C. diff, I think, has been in there. The uh, blood pressure potentially enlarged taut. That is surprising, I think, to most of us. That would not be the wake-up call. I think to some extent for all of us that all this damage is inside. She can't see it. So, you know, if it's hidden and she doesn't see, it's not like if you've got a big gash on your arm and it gets infected, you can see it. Oh, my gosh, it's infected. It's going to fall off. She can't see the damage. And I think she has felt so bad for so long, it's her normal. Right. Right. Because she just get any exercise. I mean, it's so bad. That to me is like yeah, the she's worst. She's a cockroach. Part. I agree with Rita. She, she is. I mean, <laughs> uh, 
but you know, uh, every dog has its day and, uh, it, and it's, uh, not going to be, I don't think it's going to be one of these little simple, um, things that happen. I think it's going to be something catastrophic. That right. And that was, is. yeah. And not to interrupt you, but I don't know if you watched her the other day and this is what, uh, Rose Thorn React says, and then I'll give you my thoughts on something. And then you let me know your thoughts and then the thoughts on the grocery haul. I think she's given up on everything. She has said she doesn't like change, and what's needed for her is a complete lifestyle change. I know her glow up, that six-pack mm -hmm. that she was talking about getting the other day. I almost killed myself when she talked about getting a six-pack. And the way she talks about weight loss surgery, as if she's just going to kind of uh, just walk into a clinic and get weight loss surgery. She would have to go to somewhere in Turkey or somewhere for something like that because any legitimate uh, bariatric surgeon would never allow a patient without any counseling preparation. I mean, it's 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 a big thing to get weight loss surgery. It, it's really not something that like one day you're in the doctor's office and, and two weeks later you're on a table getting a sleeve. <laughs> well, her, her health is just so bad even if if she did the therapy and went you know through all the hoops and was approved it's just her state of health she is not somebody I would want to be doing surgery on right she would have to pass at least here in the United States and I'm sure it's the same in Canada and many other countries that she would you would have to give her a cardio uh, catheterization test, uh, you know, just to make sure she was clear on the whole arteries before you put her under any type of real anesthesia. Because well, she could, it would be dangerous, I think, at this point. With the with her liver the size that he is, can you imagine trying to do some kind of laparoscopic surgery with, oh with that organ being four or five times the size it's supposed to? I mean, there's just so much. Right. Um, and that was something that we brought up again last night. And then let me know about this, what you think about this food. Um, uh, that the um MRIs may not be a sufficient size for her to have been diagnosed with cyanica, you know? So where is she going to get all this like testing done? Because she's may not fit the average size equipment. Well, you know, I do know they make the open MRIs for larger people and, you know, face it, it and I'm just speaking on the U S uh, right. so much of our society is obese that, you know, look, you know, this, right. How many hospital rooms have been modified to, oh. feed, to fit bariatric beds in? Oh, absolutely. But uh, I, so I wonder in a place like Kuwait, uh, I, even though she says the page people are larger, I wonder how, how, how readily available is that for her? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> So uh, it's a specialty sort of correct. Uh, look, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right. What do you think to her grocery haul? I mean, this looks great. I wonder no wonder where's this vegetable now? What state and condition is it in? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we've not seen her cook any of it. So I don't know. Maybe Howie's having a nice um healthy dinner of <laughs> fruit and veg. Uh, oh, you got to be careful. Those carrots have a lot of sugar. Oh, oh yes. I forgot. I, don't... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, there was a lot of talk in the uh, community about this being from some type of food bank or subsidized um, grocer. And, you know, if, if that's true, I just think, you know, that's really uh, disgusting for, I do for them it, it, that, if it's true I'm just saying but you know the evidence from what I've seen is is uh, pretty strong to that effect and that's um, what I think I've heard too and that would give a better understanding as to why the groceries are so cheap and how she doesn't really know how much they are mm-hmm yeah, it's because they're subsidized and here she is getting subsidized groceries. She wastes a heck of a lot of it. And then she turns around and buys takeout. 
So if, if she was at least donating it on to Salal's family or something, I would at least feel, or somebody, I would feel at least like, well, at least they move. But she just lets it go to waste in the fridge. Yeah, I feel like if she was giving it to neighbors or family or friends that she would be, you know, shouting that from the mountaintop. Uh, oh, look what I did. I, I gave it away. I'm such a nice person. Um, you know, I and this is just totally my opinion. I think she has some form of like food hoarding. You know, that if she has a lot of this food around her, even though she's not going to eat it, it's not stuff she would eat. It, it somehow makes her feel safe. Uh, you know, like you, when you see the show Hoarders and they have all the stuff around them. Uh, but I think she has some kind of, of food hoarding. That, oh, yeah. You know, that's, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not in the psychology department, but I, I can't understand why you would. Why would you even want to clean this rotten stuff out of your refrigerator? And that makes sense, too. And, and, and the fact that she's kept pots and pans for extended periods of time in her kitchen dirty. And she's talked about her childhood being a welfare girl. So it yeah. makes sense that she, you know, in this again, we're just making speculations here. Um, but I could speculate as a healthcare professional that seeing that refrigerator and how much food was kind of stuffed in there and so forth, mm -hmm. it definitely reminds me of, you know, anecdotally my own grandmother who grew up in the Depression era and mm -hmm. had a horrible food hoarding habit. I mean, just hoarded everything in the free. I mean, just didn't let it, kept rotted food, you know. So it just is very reminiscent to me of that behavior from my grandmother. And it just, I, I, I'm sure there is some, um, some interesting uh, psychology behind her feeling deprived of food potentially as a child. Um, but her mother also using foods as treats because she talks about her mom still getting her an Easter basket. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I can't say much about that. My my parents did that for me up until they passed away. So, Aww. you know, the, the Easter cards and Valentine's cards. So, you know, I can't say much. I, it was well, like a five dollar bill. They didn't give me. They didn't give me no food. It was like a five dollar bill. But, uh, oh yeah, no, 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 that's a southern thing. <laughs> my yeah. I always got my family always sent me cards and stuff. There was nothing, it was, but they always remembered the holidays. There might be a little thought in there, but it was nothing big. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Goodness. Okay. So it's a shame. I've said actually that she should have had somebody come in that's a chef in that area and show her how to make dishes that are local dishes that could be frozen or kept and actually do some interesting content with these fresh vegetables and make all these foods and make sure that they're not filled with salt and sodium. But I don't know if you saw the other day, uh, after she got this grocery haul, and I think she burnt some rice pudding and made mm -hmm. a really sad mm -hmm. yeah. looking breakfast and a very sad looking oatmeal <laughs> that looked very yeah. crusty. And after that, she declared she did not understand how people could make homemade food. <laughs> yeah, I, she scorched that pudding. I, I see a lot of people in the chat putting it, and I agree with them. She was not a welfare girl. Now, when she was a baby, her mother probably received some kind of assistance being a young single mother. But her mom remarried when she was five or six. And when you have, and she says, this is her words, grandparents on both sides that spoiled her, um, you know, I don't think she ever wanted for anything. Uh, and uh, and then spoiled her with, I feel like, anything she wanted. She just mainly wanted food. So, you know, kind of trying to strike herself as this, you know, poor pitiful pearl i was on the welfare and they made fun of me in high school no 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 your mom was remarried uh when she was five or six so um i don't think she had any food scarcity i don't think that was ever in her life right and i'm and i'm, I'm sure some of the canadians would attest to probably there being Probably pretty good uh, systems of support for Chantel having a young mum, especially around that time. Chantel is not that old, you know. She's not 
you know, my mother's generation here in Virginia was a lot different in the 60s and 70s than Chantel's mm. mom probably in the 80s and 90s in Canada. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, Team Psych Ward makes a good point here. And, and I have said this now, you know, this is just my unofficial thing. I do not believe she has a binge eating disorder. I don't think she does. I, I mean, I've seen it in my practice. Um, I think she has some type of impulse control disorder. Uh, that's just my little registered dietitian Freudian spin on it. I, I don't think she has binge eating disorder. Right. And I wondered about that too, because there's other sort of behaviors that go along with that disorder that she doesn't seem to. Because a lot of times I want to say that, and I don't know with these new people online who make money, but a lot of times, I, and, I, and, and I've, you know, other psychiatrists, you know, people have pointed out this, you know, these are, these are why psychiatry is such an interesting debate. And, and, and Cheekbones and I, Sonia and I are not psychiatrists. We're just speculating here. But we are in the healthcare or field. Um, in the respect that I always wonder if, you know, these types of personalities that do this, you know, online, it's, it's usually binge eating has got a little bit of shame, I want to say. They kind of hide it. I want to say, you know, it's not like yeah. you want to like show the world, you know. So that's why I just, it just, it just sort of, it's so strange to me that it's so uh, public to have people see people eat such huge amounts of food. And I just heard a very interesting study today. Uh, I love my doctor's radio about ultra processed food and about the younger you get it in age, the more harm it's going to, you know, give you over time, just like anything with a lot of ingredients, and, right. you know, so all these like traditional supplements and all these extra quest bars and stuff, they're terrible. Wouldn't you say that the, this stuff that we're looking at is actually probably pretty good? Yes, I agree. What, what most of what we're looking at in her hall is very good. Right. And that's what's such a shame. Is like uh, she is gonna do. No, we haven't even seen Howie with the carrot. Okay, let's finish this grocery haul, and then we'll get over to our question. A lot of marinated eggplant and um, baba ganoush. Always just have an extra jar of pasta sauce on hand. Um, have some lemons, a couple kilos of lemon, because that's important too with salads and making grape leaves. Which, by the way, a huge staple drink for Ramadan. Um, Muslims will know, or Arabs will know as well. Um, Vimto is huge. It's a, it's a drink syrup. Uh, I'll have to put what it's made of. It's like you add water. You know what it's made of, Chantel? Because I grew up in England. Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> 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 I grew up in the UK and I grew up on squash and cordials and all that stuff, you know, and it's just a very, you know, it's just how people used to flavor water in England. A very simple, you know, simple way to make flavored drinks. Very, you know, it was especially orange squash was very popular, but it was just orange sugar water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything syrup, <laughs> there's your, there's your sign. Right. And then the other day, I'm sure you saw she was drinking. I'm sure this really, oh, I'm sure you love this as a registered dietitian, having worked with patients with diabetes, especially type 2 unmanaged, like Chantel. Uh, the fruit juice straight from the bottle. Especially cranberry, I think it was too, which is very high in sugar. It, it, all that juice is for her. It's not for Salah. Uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe he gets to have a, a, a glass of it, but after she's been swigging surprise. it directly from the bottle, you think that oh, always yeah. is a hallmark sign of a living aloner to me. <laughs> As he swig that juice from the bottle. <laughs> Look, I don't drink after my husband, so you know, yeah, I'm, it's for her. I had no doubt. At any time, and did not surprise me at all when she was chugging it. You know, it's just, I think every, when she do the mukbangs and have her big fishbowl glass up there with, it's just for show. Any other time, if the camera wasn't on, she is chugging it out of the, out of the container. So, didn't surprise right. me. 
Right, and here she's got this meat sitting out here. For how long, I have no idea. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. No, don't know. <laughs> it's come from probably a store or wherever they sell out, picked it up in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. Very odd. You know, mm -hmm. that it, that's what's so, it's like, really, in the middle of the night, like this grocery haul? Just very yeah. odd. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously, it's a lot of food in this I mean, because obviously it's a celebration for this very special holy month that's just started today. So I'm not surprised they've been, you know, gifted with, you know, these uh, very lean looking beef cuts. But why is it out of the fridge? I I don't know. Look, I, you know, I'm real anal about food safety. I mean, it's just it's part of my education, you know, and. You know, I was a director over our kitchen at our local hospital. And, you know, you're that's just drilled in you. So uh, there's no telling how long it's been sitting out. But, you know, she ate porch food. So she just don't care. I mean, she ate that, what was it, Indian food or something that sat out on the porch all night. So Well, she, well, she just said the other day that her stomach was upset. I don't know if you heard that from her live yesterday at all. Oh, and that's why she after, kept getting up to go to the restroom the other day. Was that the day after the hoagies and pizza? Yes. So well, why do you that. think potentially, because, uh, you know, from what I understand, there isn't really a specific diet recommended for people after they've had their gallbladder removed because they're going to eat whatever anyway. <laughs> so. Well, you know, the... Uh, it could be a number of things with Chantal. It could be food poisoning. Um, it could be her. Well, we her see these beef been left out. Yeah. It could be her diabetic meds, or it could just be the diabetes itself, because, you know, you do have those digestive issues. It can be constipation or diarrhea. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, you know, just close your eyes and throw a dart. You'll hit probably an answer why. Well, she said I, she I, had stomach flu. So but when she, anyone ever says stomach flu, I'm like, oh, did you throw up? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you know, there's so many cases of undiagnosed um, uh, food poisoning. You know, that might could be what it is. But uh, you know, she said, oh, it's my ibuprofen. And again, I, I have doubts as to if she's taking anything at all. I mean, you know, we always have to refer, refer to rule number one. Right. Yeah, Sandy right. Sandy 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 Sandy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what's so funny is it's like, girl, you should not be taking any type of NSAID unless the doctor's prescribed you 81 milligram aspirin. I mean, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think any doctor knowing her history of comorbidities would be prescribing her an NSAID because uh -huh. they can cause a gastric bleed in a patient and you don't know which one is going to be more susceptible to that. So right. it's usually better to just, you know, for patients like Chantel, I would think a good rule of thumb, unless it was absolutely necessary, would be to try to steer clear of the insect. Yeah, and Joanna brought up a point stomach ulcers about stomach ulcers i i had a, a history with a super morbidly obese client in acute care and long-term care setting and they scoped his stomach and when they did the number of ulcers in his oh. stomach was i was gobsmacked so mm. um I, I don't doubt she doesn't have you know, I don't know if it's H. pylori, but I think it's just from that, the stretching, you know, you put so much food in it, but I, that could quite be that she does have uh, stomach ulcers. Right. And we talked about gastroenteritis yesterday, potentially. And then, you know, and it, that, I mean, I, I know H. pylori, that particular sort of, especially is very predominant in Asia, Asian regions of the world can have that particular, um, uh, like, propensity. So I don't know if she's maybe traveled to Thailand and got anything. Yeah. 
<laughs> when she was I, eating shrimp off the street live? I'd have been more worried about running through that water, would have been, oh. with them little diabetic tootsies barefooted. Oh. That would have been my main concern in Thailand. <laughs> God. And we know in reality that her feet and her legs, I'm, I'm sure they're horrific looking, really. And she cannot, she does not probably have a mirror and stand there and check her feet and uh -huh. do anything that she needs uh -huh. to do. Nope. And I think, and that is so important. And it just, I am surprised that something more catastrophic hasn't yet occurred, but she is becoming very sedentary in that home currently i've not yes. she's not been getting out the last time she went out and she tripped and fell she winced i, I know people thought she laughed but i thought she kind of winced because it was painful and then she's like well i can feel my feet and i'm like oh that's not quite how it works girl <laughs> yeah 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 mm -hmm. i agree I just think she, you know, and you probably have seen this just in your clinical practice. You, you have those patients that will have, you know, little things happen along the way and then they'll have a wake up call. But I, uh, majority of mine that are similar in health uh, to Chantal, it's that just catastrophic thing that happens. And sadly to say, it's usually a stroke um, that right. will leave her. Or a heart attack. Yeah, bed bound. It, you know, if it doesn't take her on out, it'll be, it, it'll leave her, you know, bed bound. And I have a theory that I think she wants to be bed bound. I Ugh. almost think she, and I know, I know, but I feel that she glamorizes this idea of being weighted on hand and foot because of the way she doesn't, the way she describes, oh, Salah does everything for me. He just does everything. And, you know, they're sort of like, I don't have to do anything. And, you know, I'm thinking, girl, you don't even cook the food for this this man with all those foods that you do nothing. You just, you really just want to lay there and do uh -huh. nothing. And so the other day too, she had talked about how much her health was, uh, she felt that people online, other creators were bullying her because of her becoming less able-bodied and therefore she is now, you know, not able-bodied and therefore any sort of criticism of her health is now insulting a disabled person. Did you hear that? Uh, no. Oh, yes. No. That's what she's pretty much saying now. So I, you know, this is somebody who I am seeing has made lifestyle choices to become unhealthy and less able bodied to the point where she is it's potentially going to have a catastrophic event such as a stroke or a heart attack or another pulmonary embolism or something of that nature. And please can't kill you. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not. I mean, she's very lucky that she survived it. Correct. I don't think, I just, it's just, uh, and she does not look good. She's looking very sweaty lately. Well, you know, that's when you go to diabetes in your skin, you know, your sweat glands are affected. Oh, um, tell us more about that. Because she well, was really profusely sort of perspiring almost from the eyeballs yesterday. So much so that her chat was saying, hey, you're really sweating. And she didn't even seem to notice it. So how does that, because I'm always thinking, shoot, she looks like she's about to have a coronary. Because that's a short well, fire sign for a heart attack too. <laughs> well, and here again, we could have a lot of, of causes, but just the, the diabetes effect on the skin um, that, you know, glucose, it damages the skin cells. And it affects the ability for somebody to be able to sweat. Um, they may not, and it can go either, they may not be able to sweat very much or they may have profuse sweating. It's kind of, it can go either way. Right, right. Yeah. And she definitely was looking really peaky. So Billy Eilish said, she said something about being, about she's depressed and calling her lazy is offensive. Mm. <laughs> 
But I just think that she's kind of chosen this way. All right, let's finish out this video so we can get to the questions we had. Because I know I gave the, you those ahead of time. Let's get going. I'm always fascinated. To um, we have some pomegranate molasses beside the Vimto here, oh. pomegranate molasses. The pomegranate molasses, you use them in like salad vinaigrettes. Uh, and to you make the uh, warak inab, which is grape leaves. Speaking of which, I have a jar of grape leaves. I'm going to try making my own this year. Some cocoa powder for overnight oats for healthy breakfast for soho, which is the meal before we start fasting. Some chili garlic um, sauce. Uh, some beef cubes. Okay. Out of the fridge too long. A bunch of kilos <laughs> of carrots. Harry. My hamster loves a little bit of these. Got to be careful. They have a lot of sugar. Um, but I love carrots too. So we have some potatoes, a few kilos of potatoes. Yes, they're dirty, but they can be washed. Uh, we have some oranges, a couple kilos of oranges. Now, each kilo is 75 cents of these vegetables. Very cheap. We have some Calrose rice, medium Let's grain rice. On here. We have some bananas. We have some Looks beautiful. Ooh, parsley, cucumber, the tomatoes were on sale also. So I got two kilos of those. I don't think we've seen it with one big salad even covered with cheese and dressing yet. Mm -mm. She is mm -mm. getting even less making stuff in the kitchen recently. Wouldn't you say she's been eating more takeout recently? Even with all this, why she's bought a bunch of food recently? Well, you know what? All those potatoes and stuff too, and rice the other day. Well, this grocery haul was for Ramadan, and, and not everything, but there were some things that are, you know, it doesn't have a very long shelf life. I, I don't know why she bought it far, so far out for cooking um, for Ramadan. I would have thought she would have bought it like a day or two before, like yesterday maybe, um, because probably half of this stuff is already, you know, well on its way out. So. Um, right. No, How long I, would you say this fruit and veg? Just because you did say that you kept an eye on that. Because we've seen some manky looking fridge food come out and she's used some old looking, you know, stuff. How long would most of this fruit and vegetable be kept, safely kept? Some can be kept in the fridge. I know it degrades its flavors, but just on the whole, I mean... Say, uh, let's say for the salad, like the lettuce, tomatoes, cucumber. How long can we keep most of that safely before it starts you know, to go bad and potentially could cause us harm? You know, and I'm one of those by look kind of people. Um, you know, it might last a week. Uh, you know, the inner part of it may last a little longer. It depends. You know, I'm, I, I wash all my fruit and veg. Um, your root vegetables obviously will stay longer. Um, cucumbers kind of go quickly. Um, tomatoes, I'm going to have to, I'm not a tomato eater. I just, I think they're disgusting. So I don't know about the fresh tomatoes because I rarely buy them. Um, uh, just, I, I keep I, mine in the fridge if because I do like, I keep them outside of the fridge as long as I can. For a couple of days, and I move in the fridge. I tend to use, and what do you think about those little like um, carbon absorbers in the refrigerators? I tend to put those in my, use um, those types of containers to help try to hopefully keep my fridge a little fresher. Does, does that really work? Or am I being conned? Well, I think that's probably. Uh, I don't know about the carbon. I'm 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 a baking soda kind of gal, and that's just you know for. Oh, I have that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, I always wash my fruit and veg in either vinegar water or baking soda and water right when I get it home and, and put it in the, you know, the storage containers that have like the little platform in them. So they get air and they'll keep longer. What's your, um, what's your uh, concentration? Is it white vinegar to water? Cause I've heard that sometimes those fruit and veggie cleaners are not necessarily great. So I would like to know how I could rinse off with vinegar. Cause I, you know, I just do a bowl of ice water and just, you know, like 
chug splash some white vinegar in there um and you know and i don't know a, like an exact measurement but I, I am totally infatuated with the asian community and that's where i how they do their fruit and veg because you know mm. they're big fruit and veg um eaters but they would do either the vinegar i like my berries and stuff, I'll do a little vinegar water, put ice in it, let them soak for about 10, 15 minutes, take them out, rinse them. And I, I think they keep longer doing that. Oh, that That's interesting. And and that would be a good recommendation for Chantel because we know she likes a pickle. Uh, she don't, <laughs> she, she don't need no pickles. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she liked any idea thing that would would contain vinegar. It's a shame because I can see what looks like a really nice looking salad there with that lettuce. And I mean, one of the things with the lettuce that I would always do is definitely I have a lettuce, you know, spinner. And I always make sure when I got the lettuce home that I would always like get rid of the husk and get it into the spinner and just get it ready and kind of ready to go. Just get it done, you know? So yeah, yeah. start making those salads real quick, you know? Yeah. Just to get that lettuce ready. Yeah, um, that's what I would do. Yeah, that's one of the things. All right, let's keep looking at this little grocery haul. It looks great. I mean, I don't know about all this pasta again. Again, it's portion control, isn't it? Correct. So it's Portia, not necessarily right. that this is, you know, a diabetic can't have a little bit of pasta. It's just the portions that she eats are absolutely outrageous. And I was talking a little bit about having a starch at a meal. Now, Chantel tends to have five starches in a meal. Correct. I, her her probably serving uh, a loud serving of a carbohydrate is you know one spoonful she puts in her mouth. You know it, it's a you know it's a lot smaller and you know as a dietitian I, I I always encourage my clients to look for healthier options, more whole grains or high fiber um, options. But you know especially nowadays money is. Uh, for groceries, you know, it, groceries are so high. So sometimes you just have to eat what is there, what's available, what you can afford. So right. uh, in that case, yeah, you can have, you know, anything you want. It just has to be portioned out in your appropriate carbohydrates for that meal. Right. Right. And, and is that something that would be set by somebody like yourself, a registered dietitian, or how would somebody who's a type 2 diabetic know exactly how many carbs because I think really is there really is a misunderstanding about that when I've spoken to my own patients who've been managing you know adult onset type 2 diabetes you know it's always yeah it, it's you know I would always suggest that you talk to a dietitian or a certified diabetes educator and I'm not trying to bash on on doctors um but they're not, um, many of them are not well versed, you know, in this, oh, eat a handful of right. It, you know, you need with her numbers something a little higher. And, and, you know, and I always have to, I like to meet with them, you know, what's their goal? Is it weight loss? Is it just managing their sugars and that kind of thing? And, but, you know, when we, when I come up with like a daily caloric aim for my client, you know, just kind of a general rule of thumb is somewhere, I don't say 26 to 30 percent of your uh, daily calories be carbohydrates and then set those up per, you know, do you eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, or do you just eat lunch, dinner and a snack, you know, kind of dist distribute them through their schedule of eating. Right. Right, and the food that Chantel chooses to eat, this like ultra processed food, is like, they, oh my gosh, the way they described it is like a food, something that's an industrially processed, derived from a food source or something like that. I was like, oh my mm -hmm. God, sounds great, you know? And yeah. she much prefers that to, 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 if she, and if she made a salad, obviously we know it'd be obliterated with, cheese and uh, salad dressing and I, I have to say I when I worked at the rehab 
and met with patients, I would say, look, you're either I've had, I finally got one who was a type one diabetic and she had had a heart attack. I think it was a heart attack. Yeah. She's had an in stimmy and uh, she was in her early forties with a young child. And it was because she just did not manage her diabetes well and did not eat well. And mm. she started, and she started to even get diabetic retinopathy to the point where one of her eyes was blind. Mm. Mm. And so I finally begged her and I said, because her blood sugars were just up and down, up and down. And I just said, you have got to get your doctor to refer you to a registered dietitian. I said, there's no way that insurance is going to refuse you. Yeah. I said, not one person, you are the patient that is most needing to be there. And I think mm -hmm. that is um, one of the things that I think anybody who is a type 2 diabetic recently diagnosed, either to get into one of the programs at the local healthcare centers, have the diabetes and don't just brush it off and think the medication's got everything. Because I think, you know, I, I really just think that, I mean, I'd rather people not get it, to be honest, but I do think that patients should start to ask and advocate to get that referral to at least meet a couple of times with a registered dietitian. I think people are scared it's going to take their foods that they like away from them. Oh, I'm, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think a lot of physicians, and I hate to be so hard on them, but um, I'm just speaking from personal experiences, be it from diabetes or high cholesterol or high blood pressure. Um, when they come in to see their doctor and their numbers are up, the doctor just increases their medication. Not right. getting to why is it, you know, how much sodium are you taking in? You know, um, how much high fat, high cholesterol foods are you eating? Well, how many carbohydrates are you eating? Because it can be, you know, managed a lot of these illnesses with, with your diet, but physicians just will, slap up their medication, you know, oh, we're going to increase it because your numbers are getting up. Well, like I said before, it's like putting a Band-Aid over an amputation. It, it's going to catch up. You know, the damage is still being done and either from higher doses of medication or bad diet or both. Right. And then multiple diabetes medications managing the diabetic because they're not just on one. They're yeah. on multiple different diabetes medications, mm -hmm. especially with all these new ones coming out. You know, they're always on metformin and Genumet, which is the one she talked about. Or, you know, they might be on metformin and, you know, they might be taking having a prescription to a Zimpic or um, just a variety of different, um, you know, medications. And then once you start to see that they're on, you know, the... Uh, the uh, was it the uh, the long acting at night? Then you know they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's like absolutely. Oh, and I, I do wish, uh, you know, so far as the states, um, that they would have a mandatory nutrition class at least in high school, um, right? Teaching because, um, you know, the, the starts of heart disease are being seen in teenagers. Oh, absolutely. And, so, you know. I really oh, I wish that, it. They would, that that would be a mandatory uh, class that that students would have to take. Right. And I want to say that, that probably back in the day that the curriculum did include, but I didn't have any sort of, you know, I can probably see in my education in the UK, we didn't receive any type of, I think, education around nutrition at all. Nothing. Nothing. But, I think you were supposed to, the, of the ideas that you were taught in the home. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm, I'm Gen X and we had home economics, but that was not nutrition focused. Uh, right, right. It, exactly. It was like, learn how to make a milkshake. I mean, that's not nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm not saying that, that, that there aren't areas of the U.S. that they do, but I'm just speaking in, in my area of the South that, um, you know, that a nutrition class is, you know, not, um, I've actually talked to the superintendent of our school district about doing one um, for the teenagers because, you know, they're going through the McDonald's and that's what they, 
more, you know, more parents are working, not very many parents cook. And so they just grab this, like you said, highly processed food and, and fast food. And um, you're just starting them down a bad path. If they knew what was happening or could potentially happen, I think that would stop a lot of the health problems and the burdens on the health care system that we see now. Oh, yeah. I do wonder because I feel like I, I, I used to take care of it when I worked as a nanny when I was at nursing school took care of a generation of children being fed Chick-fil-A like <laughs> multiple times this, like in the week. I, I swear every night these people were on. These kids were eating Chick-fil-A, especially yeah. down in the South, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. The lines outside Chick-fil-A. And I always think to myself, that chicken brined and salt, people. Mm -hmm. Anyway, oh, let's keep going back so we can get on to these questions. Let's finish up this haul because we could talk about this forever. Oh, my God. A whole bunch of macaroni because Salah loves how I make my macaroni. Tomato macaroni. It's it's basically just tomato, butter, salt, and pepper, but he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the spices I needed, I got some sweet paprika. And some onion powder. And these, um, each head of lettuce was also 75 cents. Look at the beautiful, huge head of lettuce. This is the biggest romaine I've ever seen. So, yeah. Going to be making a lot of salads hmm. also. So Have you seen a salad my yet? My sister also loves lettuce. So, love yeah. chicken I make him a little salad every day <laughs> with his kibble. So that is the first round. So I'll be back for... Round two. All right, guys. So here's round two. Um, we have some cornstarch or corn flour. We have some white chocolate covered namul cookies. They're so good. Another box. We have some feta cheese and vegetable samosas. My cat's playing with the, <laughs> the grocery bags. We have some squares of cream cheese. They're kind of like laughing cow. Just a different brand. We have these are my favorite. These chicken grillers are so cheap. Um, each chicken is under $4 uh, US and about $4 Canadian. And I love making gravies, socks, anything with it. I love it. I have some frozen broccoli because broccoli is one of my favorite vegetables. I have some berry mix. I'm going to be doing some overnight oats to prepare. Um, some breakfast oh, for so Sukhur, cool. the meal we get to eat before we start fasting. As I've said, it's around, it's before Fajr, so we would eat around maybe close to 5 a.m., probably around 5 a.m., and uh, then you're going to be fasting for the day until sundown. So, all right, and we have some vermicelli. There's an Arab-style way of making rice. You kind of saute vermicelli until it gets browned. And then vermicelli is like a very small. Is that just Arab style? I want to say I grew up on that type of rice blend here in the South. <laughs> it's just pasta. Right. I want to say that's like very, there's a, what is that? Rice aroni. Yeah. Yeah. Which I would not think rice aroni is a very good thing to eat. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> just put it in with your rice. That'll all up. <laughs> because there is a, like a rice aroni with the vermicelli and stuff in it oh god oh yeah gosh and you look at the ingredients on the little flavor packets that you have to add and it's like it's like a science experiment it's wild uh, mm -hmm. small fine noodle okay and then you add the rice, make like a rice mixed with the vermicelli. It's so delicious. Some chia seeds because I'm going to be adding them. They're very high in protein and soluble fiber, which is very good for your digestive tract. And they're very good if you're diabetic. The fiber. <laughs> what do you think to that? Comments, cheekbones, about the chia what? seeds is now going to be the miracle to, to uh, help Chantel with her diabetes. <laughs> Well, I, I agree. The soluble fiber is good and, and it does have effect on your blood glucose. But, you know, having them in a big old bowl of oatmeal with fruit and probably maple syrup on it, I don't really see why. <laughs> you think it defeated the purpose of the chia seed it, at that point? Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't think that she's going to drop her blood sugar to five with her chia seeds. <laughs>
You don't think they're a miracle in a bag <laughs> over here? No, nah. I think you know I've I've used them before, and but I'm not diabetic. Um, I try to eat a lot of fiber, but uh, yeah, I, I don't. You know, if you're doing one little thing, uh, but I mean, I'm sure she thinks that that's it. That those chia seeds are gonna gonna be it. <laughs> Right, and I love the fact that she says that the broccoli is her favorite food because I didn't see a broccoli party when she hit a hundred k. Every I I don't know that I anything she eats is her favorite. I was craving it. It's my favorite. That's everything that is ever in front of her. So right, um, and that's unhealthy. It's never like she's very. She's like I said, two days of home cook home cooking of one like sad oatmeal and a sad looking burnt breakfast, and she yeah. was defeated and, and and ready to get a sub sandwich and mm -hmm. a pizza. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. All right. Let's see how she's <laughs> doing. It's Lay so bad. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and food prevents blood spiking. Your you know insulin. Uh, Prevents blood spike, uh, sugar spikes in your blood, I should say. So I'm trying to get more soluble fiber in my diet. I guess that was advised by a diabetic doctor. Um, <laughs> in case you're wondering. <laughs> so we have another bottle of Vimto. I forgot to show you. That infamous diabetic doctor that she has. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, her endocrinologist told her that. <laughs> yes, yes, that, yes. That's who, that's who she's working with currently. Yeah, that endocrinologist from the Canadian College of Endocrinology. As we yeah. The other day. <laughs> not to not to make fun of any Canadians. We're making fun of Shanta. Yes. Anyway, more Vimto. Great. Mm -hmm. Oh God, just what she needs, Vimto. And she says she likes Jello. So I think Jello, though, isn't there like not all Jello created equal? Well, I mean, is that sugar free? I, it doesn't look the sugar free Jello comes unless you get the double size in in small boxes. Because if you take the sugar out, it's like a very small package. I very seriously doubt those are sugar free Jellos. I may be mistaken, but I I don't think they are. She says she likes that Jello, so I wonder how much Jello she's eating. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be too much trouble for her to make Jello. Quite honestly, I know I was surprised. Well, this down here says no sugars. <laughs> well, in her, in her almond milk, no sugars, and the the almond old milk, regular milk. Uh, you know, I. I know. She's, uh, uh, well, she had to have that for the rice pudding. What's this over yeah. here in this packet? Oh, oh my god! I think oh. she did say the Jello was have for some. Us a while. Oh, was that what she admitted? Yeah, I think that's what she said. Okay, that's what she says always, though. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, that would be the size of a house by now. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. he'd, be, he'd be surprisingly Chantel's size if he ate <laughs> everything that she says he ate. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't see Salau after that gallbladder removal that he had. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> she is so wild. She is mm. wild. All right. Keep going, girl. <laughs> Gelatin. Salah loves jello. So um, I had another jar of pasta sauce I forgot to show you guys. It's not very organized. Sorry. The remaining spices I bought. So I have onion powder. Showed that already. Cinnamon powder. Cassia. And these are dried pomegranate seeds. And in Persian food or Iranian um, rice, they use these a lot. So, but I might Love sprinkle a few on top of some mahalabia as well. Love that rice. We also have some condensed milk. Oh, great. <laughs> we have a little bit of, <laughs> of, of vanilla powder. I think that was for the uh, rice pudding, the condensed milk. Probably. Oh, Maybe it was good that she burnt the rice pudding. It's very easy to, to scorch your rice pudding. So that was the only reason why I thought she made it was because it was scorched. But I don't know. Maybe a neighbor brought it to her. She but, no, yeah. she she said she 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 burnt the pan. So I wonder where that pan is in the kitchen. <laughs> just just take it Probably out. Probably in the refrigerator. Like the uh, blue pot. Uh, 
Because she just had like one little cup of rescued rice pudding. And then it made me think. She always gets a lot of milk. And she gets those big bags of rice. How much rice pudding is she making? <laughs> is, that's she just got a the question rice. of mine. I mean, you know, in those pomegranate seeds, there's no telling how much sugar is in those pomegranate seeds, and she's going to put it in to rice. Lovely. Oh, right, 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 with pasta. <laughs> yeah, with pasta and rice. I'm just kidding. I, I, you know, Canadians say things funny. Offense. But uh, with her pasta and her vermicelli and uh, throw some pomegranate seeds in there, and uh, let's just, you know, <laughs> Right, exactly. I just can't. All right, keep going, Chantel, so we can get to our questions for the community. For baking and cooking stuff. We have no sugar added almond milk for the overnight oats. I just prefer it. Oh, that's why that she didn't thing. like those. We have some fabric softener. <laughs> this is a local brand. I don't know. <laughs> a reach. We have some mixed berry juice. These are some mixed types of like snacks like chip snacks and stuff oh, great so mm -hmm. um we have some laban which is like a dairy kind of yogurt drink some sunflower oil some sliced olives i to salads oh. so i was sort of having a thought around that having been a distance runner that one of the things that we kind of didn't like to eat too much was yogurt because it put weight on you. <laughs> well, I, I would think it was low fat, but yeah, isn't I mean, there a correlation between all this yogurt and weight gain? Well, I mean, anything full fat, you know, is is going to be uh, more, you know, weight. Uh, unfriendly than your low fat or non fat, but I think she's doing this yogurt and kefir and stuff because of her digestive issues. Right, right, and I think I've said something that to that effect too. Is she's thinking she's got all this probiotic stuff, and I'm thinking, girl, you're just getting putting weight on too, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and if here she goes, she's got all this bread, she's grabbing. Look to her right is that bottle of fruit juice that she had. Yeah. And that thing, she had finished that juice and was finishing it off, like, I, I want to say, in the one of the meals, either the sub meal or or the pizza meal, the one pizza. of those. Yeah. It was the pizza. Yeah. And and Joanna, and, Joanna mentioned, yeah, she had a freezer full of pita before. And... <sighs> And she's gone through all of it because there'd be no way to put this in the freezer. Right. She's food hoarding. I mean, she's absolutely food hoarding, but I cannot believe she drank that much juice in that short of an amount of time. Yeah. For somebody with type two unmanaged diabetes. And there was Chantel who drank all that down. Salau was not sharing that with her. No. Absolutely not. That's wild to me. And then all this bread. Oh my God. Cheekbones. This is how is she still around? But I haven't seen her today. Mm -mm. So a whole bunch of bread has not to feeling go in the good. freezer. It's just a staple here for breakfasts and things, especially for Salah. I mean, I do yeah, eat it okay. too, but <laughs> um, more <laughs> juice. So these are the table covers we use. They're white and you put them down when you're going to eat. Um, if you're going to eat on a table, but mostly if you're going to eat on the floor which a lot of people at gatherings here, they eat on the ground. So uh, so I guess that's it. I'm going to go put this, these things away. Um, thank you for watching this haul. So everything total, I will put the prices um, here somewhere to show you the conversions and this in really American correct. and Canadian yeah. and in Kuwaiti Dinar. Uh, just a reminder, the Kuwaiti dinar is the highest valued currency in the world. So it's, uh, I think, about $4 to $1 Canadian. So like one, no, sorry, the other way around. Like one Kuwaiti dinar is worth about $4 Canadian. Um, a little less for U.S. because the U.S. dollar is stronger than Canadian dollar. So yeah, stay tuned. Ramadan is supposed to start. Um you know, depending on the moon, but it's supposed to start the evening of the 10th of March. 
So coming up very soon in a few days. And I have to get my kitchen in order. I have to, you know, reorganize my kitchen and make it conducive for doing some cooking because I'm going to be doing, you know, iftars, um, dinners after the fast is over. And I'm going to try to cook as much as I can and make a lot of traditional dishes. And I want to make um, some things, you know, some uh, maybe some mahalabia and pass it around to some neighbors around here and just try mm. to give back a little bit. What do you think mm. of that idea on that dessert? Well, you know, she doesn't need to be eating any of these desserts, but Lord, she don't need to be giving that to nobody. I mean, if she is not no mm -mm. health, safety, uh, health, uh, cleanliness. Mm no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. hopefully they won't eat it if she does it. Well, we know she won't cook anything, and she certainly doesn't believe in charity to the neighbors, especially sharing food. So we know that's never going to happen, thankfully. But yes, I would definitely have a lot of questions around her hygiene, uh, mm -hmm. especially considering that uh, somebody told me that they had not seen her washing her hands and going to a restroom. Oh, no, she never has. Which, but, uh, but she says because she out. doesn't wipe, she doesn't need to wash her hands. Why is she not? How she, does she know? She, oh, God. Don't even this know. was back in the villa days. She oh, said God. she had went to the restroom and people commented when she got back on live, you know, you didn't wash your hands. And she said, well, I didn't wipe, so I don't need to wash my hands. Oh God! How is she? Why? Oh, I don't even want to know why she. Yeah, well, she's not she wiping. Reach. She can't reach, I guess. But yeah, she God. said she drips dries, and then I agree. I don't. I don't think she can reach either with that hose or oh. with toilet paper. That's why she smelled sour when uh -huh. she was camping because she oh, probably uh, smelled she like sure urine. She oh, smells uh, like urine. Oh, among other things, yeah. Oh, God, it's all in her clothes. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I've worked with many elderly patients. I know. A, 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 oh, that's. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, that's really bad. Yeah. Oh, and she expects and she's sitting there like acting like Susie Homemaker over there. Yeah. Oh, gross. Gross, gross. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The, 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 Chantel breaks me every day. Yeah. <laughs> That's nasty. Oh my gosh. I just can't. All right. Let's, I don't, let's see what else she got to say. And then we're going to answer our questions. She got like a minute and a bit to go. I don't know how she always she's going to finish. Uh, yeah. So this is how we are going to start Ramadan off. We're going to be doing some cooking. And here's a lot of the ingredients I will need. Now, I might need a few other things, but, you know, they weren't on sale at the store we shopped at, so we might have to look elsewhere. But that's kind of how we do the shopping to try to save money also on food is um, you kind of shop at different places that have different things on sale. And around Ramadan, there's a lot of sales, like Ramadan deals. You'll see them all over the, the grocery stores. And by the way, in Arabic, here we call the grocery store um Jamia. they call them Jamia here so yeah I'm, I'm learning little words here and there <laughs> so I'm excited I'm, I'm nervous but I'm excited especially to make my own grape leaves because I've never done that but I found some yummy recipes and I'm going to try to follow them as well but a lot of the staple foods for um uh, I love being taken into Chantel's fantasy what about you Sonia <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here shaking my head. That's are you? What, what are you shaking your head about specifically? Just the a number of lies she's telling about how much she's going to be cooking? Yeah, uh, just all of it. Yeah. And, and just the whole, it's on sale. It's Taco Tuesday. That doesn't just Ramadan. The Vimto is beautiful. Choices. And you oh, have the, the, samos, the, the samosa. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry, sorry, Sydney. I, I hit the wrong button. Continue. <laughs> I, I was just saying that her her defense of oh, it was on sale. Oh, it's Taco Tuesday. Oh, it's two for one. That that's not a defense for poor food choices. I don't care if it's on sale or not. You don't need to be eating it, and uh, or if if she can't eat it, not in the portions that she's eating it. 
Right, and the thing that just kills me is she's got all this food here. And in reality, she showed us two pictures of the things she said she made to eat. We didn't see her eat those. So I don't know how how much she consumed of those overnight oats. I If she just made them with unsweetened almond milk and a little bit of cinnamon on top or something, she probably was like, Bleh! Yeah. Oh, I'm you know, sure. With the fruit, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm sure that went down like a lead pipe. Uh, so <laughs> um, and so, and then the breakfast. She supposedly did like curried hash browns. I don't know. Everything looked brown and fried. And uh, after that, just, she gave up. She was like, "I am not cooking at home." No, she was tired of home cooked meals. She just couldn't eat another one. That's right. How dare she be subjected to have to have. <laughs> Fresh food at home, that salad, that terrible salad. And, you know, those beautiful looking um, eggplants and stuff she got in there. Yeah. You know, she can't even put pasta sauce on some dang pasta noodles and just eat that and be happy. No. No, it has to have cheese. It's got to have cheese on it. Well, and then yeah, she got to well, eat it with buttery garlic bread. Come on now. Absolutely. And I'm guessing that the specials that she's referring to, uh, or the specials at all the takeout places that she's headed to. Because she don't cook at Baramadan. Uh -uh. No. Unless that's where she's today, and that's why we haven't seen it, because she's in that kitchen rolling up those little grape leaves at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. Oh, oh yeah, still, I could just see her. Bread. We still haven't seen baked bread. She said she did that pizza crust. She did not do that pizza crust. Uh, so what, any what yeah, pizza crust? grandiose ideas of what she's going to be cooking and uh, what she does cook looks appalling. The only thing she makes are pot pies. Those freaking uh, awful looking pot pies because she likes to make that roux sauce because that's the only thing she can make is some roux sauce. Everyone can make a roux sauce. Even I can make a roux sauce. And it, I don't think there's one person who's not banana Europe who doesn't know how to make a roux. Uh, I mean, no. You know, and you probably in the South too, probably just have a lot of French cuisine down that area, probably make one too, because it's, it's oh. like that classic. Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, her level of cooking is, uh, is uh, pretty, the bar's pretty low on that. I, I would need it. But, you know, it it's as... As a dietitian looking at her cooking, it's almost like she tries to pack as much fat and calories into something as she can, where she could have, you know, used 2% milk, uh, making her bechamel. She uses heavy cream. Oh, I put a stick of butter in it. Um, you know, it's like you, you don't need all that. Why do you do that? But I, you know, I think it just goes to, she, ha it has to have that high level of fatty taste or she's not happy. God. And she doesn't even have a gallbladder, man. It's just no. wild to me. Oh, my I know. God. I know. Oh God. I just, I just, to me, I just. Not that I, you know, I mean, I don't even eat dairy products, so I can't even imagine. Well, I like my dairy, but um, I, I have for 30 years, um, you know, it's low fat or fat free dairy right. is, is all I've eaten. So, you know, I, I, I try to make food and take the fat and sodium and, and if it's a, you know, if there's a better replacement for a simple carbohydrate, that's, I try to make it the healthiest that I can. That's, I like to challenge myself to do that. Um, but it, she's like the polar opposite. It's like, well, let me take this uh, recipe that it's pretty fattening and I'm going to make it even worse. Oh yeah. Oh, those pot pies. Those, those things are terrible. God, I, that's like the only thing she'll make. She's probably unhappy. She don't have anything for a pot pie. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, you also have the mamul. So basically dates and biscuits made with dates. Mamul is very popular for Ramadan foods. So, and also Arabic desserts like mahalabiya. That's why you see a lot of things on sale such as, you know, um, vanilla powders, cornstarch, corn flour, milks and stuff like that. So 
a lot of people make those things. All right, guys. So I guess that's it for now. That's all. All right, we'll get rid of Chantel and bring our questions up. I just wanted to say, and uh, we'll get through these questions quickly and get us out of here, um, that, because I appreciate all your time this evening, uh, Miss Senia, and if you haven't had a chance to like or uh, subscribe or whatever, uh, please do so, and the poll's still probably open. We'll give the poll at the end. Um, sorry, I've got myself off track there for a second. I was just thinking that uh, Miss Chantel here um, is not going to cook anything. Oh, that's that's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah. What are your final thoughts on her uh, grocery haul here before we finish this out? Well, I mean, it's it's not uh, diabetic friendly. That's for sure. It's not heart disease friendly. It's not, you know, health wise. It's, it's it's not very good. I, I like that she got the fruit and veg, but, um, or mostly veg, but I, I have a suspicion that'll just uh, go into the bin. Right, right. And, and the funny thing to me, too, is that it's supposed to be like a holy month around fasting. And here she is just like pointing out a bunch of food. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't say fasting to me. I mean, I mean, obviously they have to, they change the hours that they eat because of the, you know, the, the, the month. And obviously there is obviously a lot of festivities around the food and how it's done. But I think there's supposed to be a little bit more about charity and stuff. And as we know, Chantel giving her neighbors anything that she's prepared would not be charity to the neighbors. No. Oh, that would God. that would be a form of punishment in several countries, I believe. Yes, I would. If we I suddenly would. heard there was like a massive like spat of deaths due to like food poisoning and <laughs> in like her apartment building in Kuwait, we'd know who was the uh, perpetrator, and it would be Chantel. God. Oh, oh Kelly like asked, that. "Where can they follow me?" Uh, honestly, nowhere. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't have a channel. Don't want a channel. Um, you know, if uh, I said in the the first stream I did, um, I'm always open to help people. If you need help and can't find resources, um, the easiest way to find me is on Facebook. If you're needing, you know, some type of dietary uh, guidance, but I do not have a uh, a channel and oh, do yeah. not wish to have one. Uh, and I'm so appreciative that you come and uh, come on to my channel and 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 come out to the community. So I certainly do appreciate you being here with us tonight.